and a Taser instructor also. Taser has been in the news a lot, okay? How many of you folks have seen recently at least one story, if not like 50 million, stories about the Taser, right? Both in newspapers, TV, quite a few of you, okay? Tony's like, what's a Taser? Right. Um, I've done a lot of media interviews on the Taser, done a lot of television stuff on it because it is probably one of the most misunderstood tools of the many misunderstood things that law enforcement do. We are probably the most misunderstood professional. Gentlemen back here would probably agree with me on that. There's a lot that we do that we have reasons for doing and the public does not understand. And one of the things that's incumbent upon us to do is to try to be a little better about explaining and marketing what we do and why we do it. All right, so that's part of our role here today is to explain this. First off, you know, I came up in law enforcement before the taser was around. Tony, I know you've been at this business for a long time. What did we resort to before the taser? Right, exactly. Ask, pepper spray, the ask is an expandable baton. The old way of doing policing is, as I used to put it, the Neanderthal way, is beating on people, okay? Now, I ask you, would you rather be beaten on with a stick or zapped for five seconds and get right up afterwards and be able to walk away? And those of you that are internet savvy, if you go onto YouTube and you type in my name, Richard Weinblatt, W-E-I-N-B-L-E-T-T, -T, you will see me being shot with a taser. And I get right back up and there's no problem. If you hit me with a baton, I would probably be all curled up and I would not get up after five seconds. Okay? Maybe Tony, being a manly man, would, but I, being, that's right, Ed, I'm going to come around to you in a little bit, but, uh, but I, being the frail person I am, would not. Most people react the same way. The next question people have is, well, what about all these deaths that happen, right? You all have seen a lot of times it gets on the news, like CNN headline news and MSNBC, talking about the deaths that occur after the application of TASER. One of the interesting things is that there have been 62 lawsuits against Taser International, the Scottsdale company that makes and distributes the Taser. 62 lawsuits. None have been successful. All right? I'm not paid by Taser. It's my own independent you know, conclusion on what they do. It is a safe device. There is no causal link between the application of the Taser and people's deaths. What happens is we come into contact with people that are in a very stressful juncture in their lives. Do you often invite the police to your birthday party? Now, I know you invite the firefighters, because everybody wants to have the fire engine at their birthday party. But everybody loves the firefighters. But you don't invite law enforcement to your birthday party. Law enforcement gets involved in people's lives when there is a problem, there is a stressful situation. We also tend to deal with people that tend to be in poor health. People that do not utilize preventative health care, do not get certain things like congenital heart defects, evaluated and diagnosed early on. We deal with people that are in poor health because they may have obesity issues. We deal with people who are in poor health because they may have acute cocaine intoxication. You know, something like using cocaine could get in the way of your good health. Kind of funny how that works out. All right, so all of those things factor in as causal factors, all right, not the taser itself. The taser sends out two probes on little wires, and they're very, very fragile, they're very breakable wires. Uh, the length of the wires depends on the cartridge that the agency chooses to outfit their officers or deputy sheriffs with, all right? In this case, it's 21 feet, some are 25. There's some out there that are 35. I don't think that's really good, but some agencies choose to do that now that the newer cartridge is out. And there are some that are even short of 15 feet, but that's usually used more for training purposes. At the end of those wires are two number eight straight fish hooks. Sounds kind of nasty, doesn't it? But believe me, and when you watch the video of me being shot with a taser, you'll see, when you go up on YouTube, you'll see that I'm already starting to go down before the darn things hit me. You don't really feel the number eight straight fish hooks when they hit you. Right, I was shot in the back. They don't, you don't feel them because the charge comes out an inch past the probe. So two inches cumulatively. Okay, um, so you don't really feel it. Sounds nasty. It's not that bad. The great thing about a taser now is when you turn it on, what do you all see there on the foil? Red dot, right? The red laser dot, what we're finding in law enforcement, 
and I believe the two gentlemen to my right could probably verify this for you, is that a lot of people are giving up right away, sometimes saying, don't tase me, bro. Right? <laughs> but they give up right away. And the best fight for law enforcement to be in is what? The one that we never have, right? Because we don't want to get into a fight. You know, it builds up our dry cleaning bill. You know, we mess up our fingernails. It's not good. We don't want to get into fights, contrary to popular belief. Okay, especially officers and deputies that have been around a couple years, you know, that that starts to lose its luster after a while. All right? So that red dot goes on, and we go, stop whatever your action is. It's obviously causing a problem, and now the person usually complies. The other thing is Taser operates in two different ways. One is, and if you all notice, there are little... Uh, Thank you. On the front there, okay? You can do what's called a drive stun, D-R-I-V-E. Drive stun, where you are driving the person back. That's the concept why they call it a drive stun. All right? And that drive stun is on a purely pain compliance level. All right? You get jolted with the 50,000 volts, which actually isn't 50,000 by the time it gets to your, through your skin and everything. It's more like 1,200. But 50,000 volts. And that is a purely pain compliance thing. The same thing can happen once the cartridge is extended here. We have those same little silver prongs right there, the same concept. That was what was done with Andrew Meyer at the University of Florida. A lot of people thought he was shot with a taser with a cartridge. That wasn't the case. It was just a drive stun. He was able to talk. He was able to move still. You know, funny how he put his hand behind his back after they did the drive stun. But if you look carefully at that videotape, you see his hand is up on a chair, and they gave him plenty of verbal warnings. They actually were very subdued in their action on him. All right, I would have done more. All right. If you want to actually shoot somebody with a taser, which is what you often see on the news when you see the dash cam video and stuff like that, that's when you take this cartridge. And the cartridge can only be used one time, okay, as far as shooting the actual probes out. All right, it's compressed nitrogen in there. All right, the charge is going to ignite or not ignite, the charge is going to activate the compressed nitrogen. All right, it's going to push a little pin in there. And then the blast doors, which is what you see in the front, the gray stuff here will open up. And then the probes come out. Okay? So we put that on. And now it's all ready to go once we put up the arming switch. You all see here the little switch, much like a firearm, it says red, red is dead. Okay, you ever hear that for those of you who have taken firearm safety courses? Okay, so now we can do that. And we've got our little red dot right there. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we can go ahead and fire this. And it will fire for up to five seconds. An officer can cut it off prior to that. All right, so we don't sit there like, you know, in the old movies of, who can't, who, who, you know, it doesn't work that way, all right? That's not what we're here for. All right, so I just cut it off. You see a wire here. Uh, here, Matthew, come on over here. Okay, see the wires coming out here, right? Okay, pretty thin, right? You could break them if you wanted to. Yeah, there you go. So you're pretty easy to break. All right, you see here, I'm going to pull this one out. All right, you can see that's a number eight straight fish hook. Yeah, just be careful, it's kind of sharp. There you go. All right, and that's what goes in there. You want to try shoot one? Yeah. Okay. Now remember, you have your you have your drive stun mode, right? It's just like that. See, it's counting down from five seconds. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to try that? Yeah, just point it down. Good firearm safety. We never point anything at anybody. All right. And you can see in the front. The actual, don't worry, the cartridge isn't on it, right? But you can see, I have it up here. You, you all see that? You see the arcing of the electricity? Yep. Yeah, everybody see that, right? That's the arcing of electricity, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and put the cartridge on. Okay, we don't put your finger in the trigger until you're ready to fire, just like a firearm. All right, don't put your hands in front of the blast door. You put, if, if you put your hands or your, your uh, fingers in front of blast doors and that goes off, 
you're going to find yourself with little probes right in your hands, all right? So go ahead when you're ready. Go ahead and put that on there. Let's go this way. Don't point at my face. Thank you. All right. There you go now. No, 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 no. Uh, there you go. This way. There we go. I don't think the vocational rehab lady would like to have that pointed at her. Even though she... Now, keep your finger out of the trigger until you're ready to fire. You're going to arm it first. Okay. Now, this is not regulated by alcohol, tobacco, and firearms because it is not a firearm. It is not gunpowder activated or anything. There is no recoil. How many of you have fired a firearm? I'm hoping to someday. All right. So, a lot of you have. You notice how there's a little bit of recoil with a firearm. It'll go up. Okay. You're going to notice there's none with this. None whatsoever. Okay. And when you're ready, why don't you move up a little bit. There you go. Now, you want to go a little bit. There you go. Whoop. Nope. Put that right about there, because your lower probe is going to go down slightly. Okay. All right, and go ahead and fire whenever you're ready. All right, you take your finger out of the trigger. There you go. And put that down. All right, now take that off. Hey, don't point it at me. There you go. As they say in, in magicians, Matthew Christo, ladies and gentlemen.